Morning, beep, 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 beep. Look at the state of my hair. Morning hair. <laughs> but even got ready yet. Important piece though. So, you know, it's not it. Not ready for the day, but what the hell. Let's do this important piece. <coughs> First thing, so we can get it out there and get people discussing it and talking about <coughs> how serious this is. This is a police piece that I believe Judy, Birch, uh, Judy Bindle, I did it, did Judy Bindle is involved in, so thank you to Judy. And to those that was uh, w that, that helped her to um, uh, tell the story, uh, she seems to have been integral in getting this out, and I think it's something that we need to take very serious note of. There will be those of you who will be a, di a bit dismissive or uh, unhappy that this particular piece comes from the Daily Mail. It comes from female, F-E-M-A-I-L, female. Um, but I would urge you, uh, if you can, to swallow your pride, take off your partisan blinders and read the damn thing. It won't kill you, you know, to look and see whether the information that is important and vital to the cause can come from everywhere. And we need to remember that very important. OK, don't ever cut anything off. It will stop you from seeing and being able to, ma to maintain a round view of what's going on. Um, I thought this was particularly important. That's why I've got straight on to do it this morning. So without further ado, let's begin. The title is What's It Really Like to Be a Pupil Today? As Trans Hysteria Grips Our Schools, One 14-Year-Old Reveals Girls Wearing Breast Binders in Class, Teachers Claiming Lady Macbeth Was Non-Binary, and tram throw, Transphobes Threatened With Strangulation. Cult. Sounds so familiar. Stories I've read about other times in history, it's so eerily and creepily familiar. So, um... Just a background, uh, the, the student we're talking about is 14, attends a co-educational state secondary in South East England, where she stays, she says one in 10 children in a year identify as trans or non-binary. After becoming increasingly upset by the school's acceptance of transgender ideology, this female student has decided to expose the truth about life in the ongoing culture war. Um, I'm not sure that's helpful. The word culture war. I'm, I mean, I understand why everybody says it, but I'm not sure it's helpful. There aren't two sides. There's only right and wrong, okay? The other day I went to the school office to get a new copy of the timetable. The teacher I spoke to used they, them pronouns about me, asking another member of staff, they have lost their, their timetable, can they have a new one? He knows me really well, and it's clear that I'm a girl. I felt furious he didn't just say she. But it's not just the odd teacher here or there. I am regularly asked if I'm in the process of transitioning. There is a gender neutral uniform policy at school and lots of the girls wear trousers. Those of us that do are often asked if we are transgender. Especially if we have short hair as I do. The fact a girl likes playing video games or doesn't like feminine clothes or makeup is enough to be seen as potentially trans. When my mum complained about me being called they, the teacher apologised but explained he was being cautious in case I was transitioning. He said the teachers are treading on eggshells, scared of being labelled transphobic. This is the resonance for me of past stories. It's the resonance. Uh, one in ten. That's insane. That's insane because you and I know this is nonsense. You and I know gender identity doesn't exist. You and I know. Who's at the back of this? Who's behind this? The men. You and I know. From Benjamin and Money to Chegley, right the way through, we know who these men are. We know how this came about. And now it's being used by the state as a football. A political football. And they need to make a stand. This stuff needs to be... It doesn't need to... We're not going to be quiet, quiet, nicely, nicely. This needs to be ripped from schools overnight. Overnight. They're doing it in states in America. We need to do it here. The young lady continues. It feels like trans is all anyone talks about. The library has a section devoted to LBGTQQIA plus books. And there is a display for pride in the school entrance with rainbow flags and words and terms such as non-binary, polysexual, demi-boy, demi-girl and pansexual. <coughs> These words come up in lessons too. I'm now in year 10. And the other day, a girl in my English class asked if the Greek god Zeus was a man or a woman, and the teacher replied that Zeus could have identified as non-binary. One generation. One generation shorn of reality. One generation given a queered history. One generation given a queered geography. Bear in mind, this is a template. It goes across everything. One generation given this type of information, and you have a breach 
in the intergenerational coherence and cogency of our shared historical narrative. And that is their aim. That is the aim of these people. And they will do it through fear and force and threat, which is exactly what this young lady is experiencing, a kind of microcosm of what we're seeing happening in workplaces around the country. More recently, another teacher said Lady Macbeth was neither a man or a woman. Oh, I'm awful. All I can think is out, out damn cock. Don't. Right, okay, stop, Barry. More recently, another teacher said Lady Macbeth was neither a man nor a woman. I think most parents will have no clue what is that this is what their kids are being taught. I've said this before. If you're a parent and you're not looking and you're not paying very, very close attention, close, close, close attention, you are remiss. There is nothing more important right now in the life of your child than your ability to disrupt and destroy this narrative they're being sold by schools and put them on the path of reality. No matter how painful the medicine... She then says, so I'm glad that the Education Secretary Jane Keegan is set to tell schools they must be more open about their handling of trans issues. I'm, I'm, I understand that the young lady here is, 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 is pleased to see that. It's not enough, Gillian. It is nowhere near enough. Nowhere near enough for you to go, well, actually, you should probably be open about it. They shouldn't be open about it. It should not be able to happen that this crazy, nonsensical belief system should have a hold in schools. I mentioned yesterday in a tweet that I'd come across some you know, NHS person who thought that gender was set at four and uh, believed all this rubbish. Believed all this rubbish. I mean, the Tories are going to lose the election any year. But anyway, that's what it looks like. For God's sake, Sunak, make an half-hour speech, set, set down the history of it, set down the reality of it, and tell the British public that they've been duped, that they've been duped by bad actors. The hell have you got to lose? Nothing. I'm glad Education Secretary Janine Keegan is set to tell schools they must be more open about the handling of trans issues. I would be too scared to say this at school, though. I would lose my friends if I did. And they're completely intolerant of anything they think is transphobic. They aren't your friends, lovely. They are, I'm so sorry, but they're not. And I know that you're 14, right? But hey, got to grow up sooner or later. They're not your friends. I wish they were, but they're not. They're not. And if they're people that are taken by delusion so easily, they aren't the people that you should be building your friendships on. I'm very sorry, but that's the truth. That's what made me decide to speak out here without giving my real name. When I started at my secondary school four years ago, I didn't even know what transgender meant. See, they have to learn this. Four-year-old trans kids. Just stop. It hadn't been talked about in primary school or at home, but within days we were told by a teacher in our PSHE, that's Personal, Social, Health and Economic Education, this is where this stems from, although it is across the curriculum, remember that, that we would be seen as transphobic if we used any of the offensive words from a long list, which included gender bender and butch. They don't want you to be able to actually describe the reality. They will take the words from the children so you can't describe the reality. I had no idea what transphobic meant, but I could tell it was definitely something I didn't want to be seen as. At that age, when you are told something at school, you just believe it. She's 14 and she understands better what it means to be a child than these idiots who are teaching an iatrogenic theory that is bound to lead them to damage, that is dangerous to the children in their care. We trusted that what the teachers told us was true. Where is the safeguarding to get this stuff out? But I did ask my mum about it later. She is a feminist and is critical of students being dictated to. She said that often it depends how you use words, that people within queer communities have used gender bender as a positive way to describe themselves and that butch is used by lesbians to describe other lesbians who are quite masculine in appearance. Well, it's true, but it's not queer communities. All right, forget the idea that this community. They're not communities. It's nonsense. It's a myth. All oh, this is a myth. It's constituencies. While still in my first year, 11-year-old girls in my class began asking to be called he or them. You know the response to that? Don't be an idiot. That's it, right? Get out, go on, off, don't be an idiot. Soon afterwards, a number of others were doing the same. It felt as if they joined in because it was meant they were seen as cool. What a surprise. Now you put together the cool kids who think it's cool, I'm they, them, with a zealot of a teacher who believes completely in this bullshit. And you've got a student that is ripe for the trans in. And the chances are 
right for the transing that they are, but they'll be gay or lesbian or autistic or ADHD or a looked after kid or somebody with, with trauma in their past. It's an open goal. It's an open goal for the goal for the zealot. It's an open goal for the zealot. Particularly the homophobic ones, and you won't know who they are, because they keep quiet these days. Oh, we've got her. It's a terrible situation. As soon as a girl says she is a boy, her name is changed on the school register and students are told to use their chosen boy names. That is professional negligence. It's where's off said? Oh, captured. Now out of 200 students in my year, at least 20 say they're trans. Almost all are girls claiming to be boys or non-binary. Although there is one boy saying he's a girl, this really is largely about girls saying they are boys. The kids in my year don't say they are lesbian or gay because these words are thought to be an insult. One generation and we'll wipe it out. Everything, everything that, that people worked in the past for. Everything wiped out. There's a straight boy going out with a straight girl who says she is trans, so he's now had to say that he's bisexual. You see how this works? Confusing, confusing kids. It's often said by my schoolmates that trans girls are better girls than other girls. Only men can do women better than women. I find this insulting, but the teachers don't take any action, even if they do hear conversations like this, because they don't want to be called transphobic and they don't want to be strung up by their Buster Browns, by these, by these fascistic, authoritarian monsters at the heart of this movement. Recently, I was watching a news item with friends about changes in the Gender Recognition Act in Scotland and every time a guest on the programme said this is a threat to sex-based rights, my friends were sneering and laughing. It made me feel as though girls have no, no rights and are not respected in my school. There is constant talk of transphobia and bigotry and many of the students who say they are trans constantly talk about being victims with anyone who isn't trans being the perpetrator. And there you go. There you go. Paolo Freire, right? Okay, there it goes. There it is. Whack. Have it. Have some. Have some Paolo Freire. The teachers are teaching this because they've been taught this by the people who taught the teachers because that was in the universities where they let this stuff grow and they let this stuff take power because it's filled with absolutely weak as water men who did nothing. Nothing. To stop this attack on women and children. But they're starting to come. Some of the men are going, hang on, that's enough. They're coming. They're, coming. they're going to start to come forward. We'll see free speech defended. So it's going to come, an attack is going to come against all this from many ways. But it took the women, the likes of Kathleen Stock, to begin this process. It took women, Joe Phoenix, to stand up and say no. Right? But yet universities are absolutely steeped in this. Absolutely steeped in it. Not only that, they're doubling down. So they're creating more teachers and more HR professionals that will put more of this into schools, not less, and will continue to undermine reality for children until the only reality that's left is the one that they give them when they leave them as a, con when they approach them as a confused husk of a human and fill what they feel they haven't got, which is the truth, with a truth that is nothing but lies. That's what they will do. And at that point, it's game over. The intergenerational cohesion's gone. They've broken the temporal line from the Enlightenment right the way through to now. That's what they do. My friend Kelly, she continued, was affirmed, accepted without question, as a boy in year seven. She has serious mental health problems and is regularly off school and self-harms. Kelly socially transitioned without any teacher challenging her. She has a new name and can now use the boys' changing rooms. Oh, God, I despair. All my, gen all my friends pretty much believe in gender identity. Girls and boys are referred to by teachers and students as assigned female at birth or assigned male at birth. This is shortened as AFAB and AMAB, which we know. There is also confusing language such as words for being attracted to non-binary people. Scoliosexual. I mean, these people are insane. There is a lot of breast binding going on too, but we don't know who might be on puberty blockers because no one talks about that. This is the language of school kids. For God's sake. You know, we've medicalised school, we've medicalised children, we've therapeutised children. I saw somebody today whipping on about what can we get, you know, four-year-olds to do for mental children's mental health week. These people are ghouls. What do we get four years old to do for children's mental health week? Go outside and play in the dirt. I joined the Equalities Club. Why has a school got an Equalities Club? It's an affinity group. <clears throat> Because I believe in equal rights. Equalities clubs have nothing to do with equal rights. <clears throat> and then found it was impossible to talk about any group other than trans people that was discriminated against. 
it's, they've pulled a trick, haven't they? They pulled a fast one. There's a rule against wearing badges in the school, but some students wear trans flag and pronoun badges and nobody tells them off. There you go. The priestly class. Red in tooth and claw. Recently, a group of us watching Prime Minister questions, and when MPs talked about maternity care using the terms birthing parent and non-birthing partner, I wondered out loud why they didn't just say mother. I was told off by a friend who said not, not everyone with a cervix is a woman. I don't want to just disagree because I knew what would happen. I would be publicly humiliated. Wake up, dozy sheeple. We need you. I mean, it goes on um, and then finishes by saying that why I'm writing this piece anonymously. Um, I sh believe I should be able to say these things without fear of attack. Um, I want adults to know what it's really like in schools like mine now. This is not the first time I've heard this story. I've heard it from a number of sources and from a number of parents. Um, this is Gillian Keegan, you absolute disgrace. Do something. Do something. We've been telling you for years. Do something. Right? Well, there's a head teachers group on... There's a head teachers group on Twitter, which seem to be very good. They ask a lot of questions and they get people to ask questions. I'm going to put the link to their Twitter downstairs so that you can all go and say hello. Let's take it to the horse's mouth. The head teacher should be going, this stops and it stops now. They bring in the one in ten parents of every child and they find out whether those parents are affirming and if they're affirming, they call social services. It's not complicated. This is a red flag from top to bottom. The harm that is done by social transition is iatrogenic, i.e. once they start, it's hard to get off. Once they start, it's hard to get off because they hide their real self. You ask a gay man who didn't come out until his mid-30s what it was like to get back from hiding your real self. To be trans, you have to hide the real you. For many gay men, that meant that they stayed that way until their 30s and 40s and 50s and sometimes 60s. You ask the question, what happens when somebody hides their real self under the banner of trans? Their ability to roll back on that is going to be monumentally difficult. This is an iatro iatrogenic damaging force that is damaging the children of this country. And if it's damaging one in 10 of them, our future looks very grim indeed. Very grim. That, a mental health sales drive, how much worse can it get? Read the piece. Read the piece. I'm grateful to this young lady for speaking. Read the piece. And ask yourself, what am I doing to change this? I'll see you later.